Welcome back, everybody. I'm Damon Hatfield, and over the years, I've made no secret of the fact that I'm a big Just Cause 2 fan, so I'm very excited for this next game, Just Cause 3. Roland here is the game director. Well, yep, thanks so much for inviting me on yeah, the show. Yeah, thanks for coming by the show. So we have something kind of unique here. This is a sort of an interactive presentation of the game where uh, we'll get to see a lot of the world, and as we make our way through it, we're going to make some ch choices. It's basically choose your own adventure, Just Cause. Exactly. Right? We even call it choose your own chaos. Perfect. That's much better than my tagline. <laughs> And I mean, basically, we set this up because the game itself is about your choices and mm -hmm. what you do and your creativity. So right here, we're actually skydiving, of course, mm -hmm. uh, into a town called Alba. And this takes place on one of our islands in the southern region. So the world is over 400 square miles. You know, just like all Just Cause games, anything you see, you can go to. Yep. It's open from the beginning. We don't really gate anything. Uh, so way off in the distance there, you can kind of see in the fog, there's a base over there. We're okay. going to end up there kind of at the end of today's demo. But uh, the parachute, you'll notice it's a lot slower, more stable, easier to stay up in the air. The idea there is we wanted to redesign it to give you this kind of awesome combat platform to be able to shoot from the air, um, while also being able to easily maneuver around the environment. And of course, you can just drop right in and... Here we chose a, a Mediterranean-inspired island, so it's the mm -hmm. island of Medici. And we really wanted to use the history of what is the Mediterranean, so you'll find the old kind of Roman ruins and bases kind of built into the ruins. And we wanted to tell some story with our world, so there are people who are more oppressed when it's sitting around and the stores are kind of closed. And when you free the town by destroying all the propaganda in the town, taking out the captains, and there's various differences per town, uh, then you'll free the town and everyone will be kind of happy. But of course, we start with our iconic Di Ravello statue mm -hmm. that sits in the town, and you can choose how to destroy it. Okay, so our choices are Farmer's Revenge, Stop Hitting Yourself, or Cardipult. Uh I like <laughs> the way Stop Hitting Yourself sounds. All right, let's do it. Is this uh, Number two. Now, is, <laughs> is this the same sort of situation where there's uh, towns and outposts that need to be liberated? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we don't really start mission structures in that way. So you just kind of walk into a town and when you want to take it over and mm -hmm. eventually rebels will be spawned there. And here we're highlighting a little of the new dual tether. Yeah. So you'll notice it actually doesn't have tether strength anymore. You can control the tether strength yourself with the analog trigger. And we have multiple tether lines. So it's additive and <laughs> there we go. You can destroy a statue any way you want. And we've been working with Havoc to incorporate Havoc destruction into mm -hmm. the world. So every explosion is new and different and fun. It uh, really lets you explore what you're doing. We also spend a lot of time polishing the core mechanics, just movement throughout the world. So something really small, for example, right there, the vaulting over the edge, you can just vault over the edge by pushing forward. You don't mm. have to always hit jump and change your flow. And our chaos objects no longer have health meters on them, which means you can rip them apart. So right here, we're tethering a chaos object, and it'll actually tear apart realistically. You can tear each speaker apart. Of course, the gas stations were so much fun in JC2. Yep. We decided to pull them out of the chaos structure. So every time you come back to this town, the gas station will be back there so you can blow it up again. And we went a lot bigger. Yeah. You know, explosions. How does <laughs> it, tell me about the, the tethers. Do you, do you have an infinite supply? So of course, you can use as many tethers as you mm -hmm. want. Uh, just like the parachute, it's infinite. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're probably doing between five and six tethers simultaneously in the world at once. Uh, oh, there's the brand new wingsuit, yep. uh, which we'll talk about too. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to the tethers in a second because sure. we'll see it. But the wingsuit, we, after we stabilized the parachute, we wanted to improve the traversal mechanics. And we wanted to get that feeling of soaring through the world. So when you combine a wingsuit with the grapple hook, you can just pull yourself through the world seamlessly. And of course, you can grapple to anything. So here you can even see him grappling to the top of this red van. You know, you can just zoom through the world and we have all these online leaderboards where you can challenge your friends online as well and be like, hey, I can wingsuit for six minutes straight without touching the ground, what can you do? And it just, the idea of moving through the world was so important to us. This you know, concept of the world is so big, let's have fun just moving in it. And so we really started with polishing those player mechanics. So we're in, we're in superhero territory now. Super action hero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Rico, it's Rico Rodriguez. He's yeah. the ultimate superhero. And he's back to his home country here. So this is one of our port bases. It's a giant base that manufactures huge battleships. And uh, we're going to destroy now the spherical fuel tanks and the large distillation towers here. And you can kind of decide how you want to do that. Okay, so jet setting, hit the jump, or bowling ball. 
Uh, I like the way I like the sound of bowling ball. Okay. I want to I want to see how this is going to play out. Well, that's great because this will go back to the dual tether. You can really see. So our physics objects are all about. These are real physics, so they're all constrained. So right now, Rico is putting multiple tethers on this giant fuel tank, and even the constraints that are holding the fuel tank are physicalized. You could shoot off the base of it, you could break it off, you could attach it to a helicopter and drag it with you and drop it off somewhere. So we're going to back up a little bit here because the explosion on this is so yeah, huge. You don't want don't to stand too close. You want to you get the real scale of where it was. So you can <laughs> see, you can, and that's, that's all in your control. So once yeah. the tethers are in place in the world, you can set up these awesome chains of explosions and control it yourself. That particular explosion, we kept asking the VFX guys, can we go bigger, can yeah. we go bigger? One day they showed it to me and they're like, well, this breaks the build. And I'm like, that, <laughs> that is the right size. Uh, the other thing we did is we totally redid all of our vehicles. Um, so we rebuilt it from the ground up. So you'll notice it's really quite arcadey, but quite heavy. You can do full drifting. Uh, it has deformation, hinge parts, all the fun things you would expect in a, a great action racing game. Uh, you can after touch while racing. Uh, we've added mods into it. So any vehicle you collect, uh, we wow. have our Knight Rider inspired turbo jump. You can just go around the world, you of course, do whatever you want. You <coughs> even go through fields, nice. and our destruction is even in the fields themselves. So you can plow through sunflower fields as enemies are chasing you, and you can draw in the sunflower fields with a mm. vehicle and then look at your drawings, Yeah. which the internet won't do anything. Yeah, I know. No, I know that <laughs> <laughs> definitely won't do anything inappropriate. Nothing inappropriate. The internet's a very safe place. Uh, so right here, we're coming up on our next piece of kind of epic destruction. So it's not just the chaos objects in the world. We wanted to put a destruction in the world, and so the bridges, these huge bridges in the mm. world, can be destroyed too. All uh, right, so <coughs> whatever you want to do. Ride the tide, chop chop, hydro missiles. Let's do chop chop. Chop chop. Yeah. So again, all of our vehicles redone. Uh, we took away the entering into military vehicles by doing a quick time event, mm. and now there's it still has a gameplay mechanic around it. So there's a little bit of a pause, but Rico likes to open things with explosions, so he sure. uses explosions. And this particular heavy chopper has both mini guns on it as well as missiles, so he's trying to take out a convoy and the entire thing will destroy in unique ways every time. Uh, just from that Very guy cool. on the motorcycle, mm -hmm. missed it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to stop there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea is just to create a world that is your sandbox, your creativity, the biggest action moments you can think of. Uh, the other thing we wanted to do was we had so much fun just spawning things in the world through mm -hmm. like even our dev menu. So we took the ability to do rebel drops. So you collect all these vehicles in the world. And we're like, well, yes. we just want like we want to carry a special weapon. We want to carry a, a two-handed like a machine gun, and I want to have these. So now you carry three weapons on you, mm -hmm. and then I just want to have all those at the same time as getting a vehicle. So we just said let's just drop it all together and just make it really fun and fast and just in the world. Uh, right here, we're going to look at our new stunting mechanic. So in JC2, you were kind of tethered. You're kind of stuck on one spot, and you can move around the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now you can seamlessly move around to any moving vehicle in the world, however you want. So on the top of a train, a plane, on a car, and all your mechanics are there too. So all your shooting, switch weapons, dual tethering, everything that you could do when running around, you can also do while stunting. Uh, and of course, we have tons of variety in our vehicles. Uh, you can do combat for motorcycles. We have enemies that will fight you for motorcycles. Guys will lean out of vehicles. And of course, our vehicles are uh, all the same explosive fun. Mm -hmm. You know, things have to explode and break apart. Um, and then here we're coming up on a very different type of base. Um, this is a communications array. Uh, this is an enormous, highly vertical base. We really wanted to convince the player to play the game up in the air, have as much fun as possible up in the air. So we actually created our environment in the Mediterranean, you know, giant cliffs and caves and these huge structures so Rico can stay up in his parachute the whole time and do combat. So here, why don't we enter one of the bases? Let's do uh, overkill is underrated. <laughs> yeah. So here's one of our tanks. A lot of people ask, like, oh, are we going to do tanks? And yeah, we're definitely doing tanks. Uh, and this is not even our biggest tank right now okay. in the game. We have some pretty hefty firepower you can get into. I would imagine. But uh, the way we try to balance the game, because you have all these abilities to do all this stuff creatively, is when you're in a tank, you know, now there's going to be helicopters that are going to show up to try to take you down because you're in a huge tank. 
Uh, we wanted to have that ability of kind of balancing the difficulty level according to how crazy you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So we don't just say, oh, enemies have more health or, you know, you have less health. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we set that guy on fire with our yeah, tank. I mean, that's what happens yeah. when you run over people, right? Everything explodes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Take out the chopper. And, you know, we made the tanks really intuitive, easy to drive. They, you can move the turret really quickly, aim at what you want. Uh, and now, uh, so last week when we were messing around, we're like, well, let's just do a little montage of us playing the game a little bit. And so this last piece is us kind of wingsuiting into <laughs> the base. And uh, we want to show you the combination of wingsuit, the parachute, the free fall, Kay. to being able to reel in all in like one seamless bed. We have planted explosives, and it's not, these are infinite. You will have as many planted explosives as you want in your pocket. You can lay down, you know, up to five at once. You blow them up, and you got another five to lay down. To the helicopter. Into a giant <laughs> dish. Uh, you hear you can really see the physics as you tether a person <laughs> into the helicopter. You'll see it dip. It, the AI is trying to correct against it. But, of course, in those, like, little moments, while reeling in, you can fire a weapon. So, like, if you have an RPG like this, and this is our Hydra RPG, which is a, a shotgun and RPG kind of mixture, because hmm. just cause. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> do, uh, how do the tethers account for an object's weight? Like, do heavier objects require more tethers? Is that just how it Absol works? Absolutely. Okay. So a tether will actually break at a certain a weight restriction. So you can put multiple tethers on it and eventually break into it and pull it down. So you kind of feel it like a giant yeah. tank is going to weigh more. And so if you do a little helicopter and tether it to a giant tank, try to lift the tank, the helicopter will crash. But you go take a heavy lift helicopter, like a giant cargo helicopter, you can lift the tank in the air, but you'll have to use multiple tethers. Yeah. And then you can fly a giant tank in the air and stunt on it and shoot stuff. I give it a thumbs up. I give it two <laughs> thumbs up. Just Cause 3, the game looks insane. Uh, it's out December, is that right? It's December 1st December on 1st. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time. Roland, thank you so much for coming by the show. Thanks so much. Stay tuned. We still have games to show you here from E3, so stick around.